Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, guys, everyone. This is Bernice. Thank you for tuning into Devoted with Bernice. So, today we're going to talk about, we're still continuing with our series on perversion. Um, this is the last one. This is the part two of deliverance from perversion. Um, so, I'm going to be sharing steps into getting delivered. Um, this is the most important part of this whole series. So if you think that somebody is struggling with um, homosexuality, perversion, really send them this one. Send them the other ones too. But you want to listen to this one because this was a download from the Lord. Um, as I was in worship, praying about this and just seeking him in what to basically talk about today. Um, the series has been long. <laughs> it's been very long. I thought I was going to do it in, you know, like a quick week or two. No, it's been months uh, because sometimes deliverance takes a long time. It's like an onion, you know, you got to take out some layers and every layer has another layer you know that's how deliverance is sometimes you cannot evict everything out immediately it takes process it takes time sometimes um because sometimes the person cannot handle it and i've i've heard other deliverance ministers talk about the fact that when they did drive out every spirit out of a person they literally could not handle it. They didn't know how to live. Um, and I think that's the reason why sometimes in deliverance, uh, you take it session at a session, you know? And then you teach the person how to remain free. I believe that a lot of the people in the Bible that were before us, I believe they called God, they called Jesus rabbi, you know, teacher, because he didn't just come and command spirits out of people and heal the sick and do miracles, signs and wonders. But he taught, you know, he taught people how to live righteously. He taught them how to live the way that God has called them to live. And through that, we have all these wonderful Bible, you know, characters and Bible people in the Bible that are very real, as you and I are real, Um and they literally, their stories teach us what to do and not what to do, you know? Even the parables in the Word of God teach us. And so the, the reason that many times deliverance is not working is because there's no teaching with deliverance. Teaching has to come with deliverance. You know, Jesus taught them before he did miracles. He he taught them, you know, and then he delivered. He taught them and then he preached and then he, he, he healed the sick and he, he did miracles, signs and wonders. He always taught. They didn't, they, didn't, they didn't know him, you know, first and foremost as a miracle worker. They knew him as a teacher. And that's why when he started at the age of 12, you know, he started to teach in the, in the church, in the synagogue. Why? Because the, there is power in teaching. There is deliverance that even happens when somebody is teaching the word of God. The word of God is miracle in itself. It's deliverance in, in, in itself. It's healing in itself. And so last time I, when I talked about de deliverance from perversion, uh, homosexuality, I was... Okay, Lord. All right. I was telling you all to read the word. I told, I gave you some Bible verses that I wanted you to read every single day, out loud, every single day. Read it. If you have to sit in the mirror and read it, read it. Because when you do that, you're using the sword of the spirit. And that's one of the weapons that we are, we are given in the spirit to be able to destroy the assignment, assignment, the assignment of the enemy. We see that even in the word of God, when Jesus came in contact with the devil in the wilderness where he was led by the Holy Spirit. Okay, he didn't just end up there by himself. He was led. 
And sometimes certain things that you go through is for God, is God has led you to go through it. Job went through it, you know. It was not something that was a surprise to the Lord. Um, even Elijah went through his own, you know, wilderness in the cave with the fact that Jezebel came and spoke some, some um, not so great things and he got fear. Um, that was his wilderness. The Lord knew that Jezebel was going to come. He, God could have stopped it. God could have stopped you from encountering that demon of homosexuality. You know, but the thing is that there is a will, you know, and there is a God. And God gives us the willpower to do what we want. You know, sometimes our own desires, our own wants and needs, and our own um understanding can lead us into the path of death and sometimes the consequences is what happens to you when you don't obey God is that you open yourself to demons and sometimes God allow it to happen because you wanted it or you were at a place or you were at a season or you were with certain things or you were doing certain things that you wanted and the consequence of what you wanted was that spirit that came along with it. And so, and even sometimes it's not you, it's the people in your generation that has passed down that spirit. Uh, And so it has to start start from somewhere. You know, somebody has to open the door for that spirit to come in. It doesn't just come in just because. Somebody has to open. Every demon that comes in the person, there has to be a door that was open. Even generational curses, there was a door that somebody opened in the family. But you are the Gideon. You are the Gideon that is about to come and erupt and dismantle that altar and remove that from your generation and even from yourself. So the Lord is telling me right now to pray. God, I thank you for this time. We honor you, Adonai. We celebrate your name. The name that is above all names, the one that is righteous, the one that sits high and look low, the great I am is who we we come here for. We come here for you, Jehovah. We come here for you, Jesus. We come here for you, Holy Spirit. And so we welcome you here. We open our heart gates to you, Adonai, that you will come in and dwell with us. We thank you for waking waking us up this morning. We thank you for giving us a new day. We thank you for your righteousness in today. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for your power. We thank you for the things that you you showed us from today that we thought were for us. We thank you, God, for covering us from every snare of the enemy. We thank you, God, for We thank you for placing um, people in our lives that are righteous, that are have a, a, a right mind and a right heart for us, God. We thank you for the food on our table. We thank you, God, for, for your kingdom, your kingdom. And we thank you for all that you do, your, your, your greatness that you do in this world, in our lives, God. Even the things that we take for granted, we say thank you and we repent for taking those things for granted granted god and so we thank you for this moment of deliverance that is about to come in the room in your people's lives those that are desperate for you you see the desperation the people that are desperate god you see your heart you don't see the physical you see the spirit and so god i pray the lord everyone that is desperate for 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 deliverance will get it today that they will be doers of your word and not just hearers only because there is a doing that needs to be done for, for 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 deliverance to happen there is something that they need to do on your part to see the manifestation of complete wholeness and complete deliverance. So I pray even now that these words that I speak, that you allow me to speak, Lord, will not fall on rocky ground, but God, it will fall on the ground that you've called it to fall on. That it will grow. That, Lord, things will not come in and remove it. People will not. Ah, yes, Lord. Ah, that doubt will not come. I come against the spirit of doubt right now in the name of Jesus. And I pray faith in this room. Holy Spirit, release faith in this room. Release faith in the minds of your people. 
Faith comes by the word of God. Hearing comes, faith comes by the hearing and the hearing by the word of God. So I pray faith in the room right now. Let faith arise in the hearts of your people. Let faith arise in the circumstances. We come against every word that has been spoken in the minds of your people that has that has ensnared their faith right now that has caused them to feel like what it is that they are requiring from you of deliverance is not capable of father you are the one that gives deliverance god you said the lord that healing is the children's bread the woman came and she said to you even the dogs get even the dogs, Lord, get the, the things that has fallen down from the table. And so, Father, there is deliverance for your children. Who the sun set free is truly free indeed. I pray now, the Lord, you will arise faith in the hearts of your people and the minds. Ah, yes, indeed, you are the miracle worker, God. You are the one that called Lazarus from death. You rose up on the third day. Oh, yes, you are the one that healed the sick, the leprous, God. You are the one that called for the man that was crippled to be able to cut the carabasoto to to be able to pick up his mat and his his mat and walk. Lord, you are the one that. Oh yes, you are the one that instructed Moses to call forth. To call forth water from the rock. You are the one that caused Moses to part the sea. Oh God, for the Israelites to walk on. Father, you are the one that caused the sea to overtake the, the, the Egyptians. You are the one that caused, oh yes, you caused Joshua to possess the land. You are the one that caused Joshua to get wisdom in how to call the, the people to worship and to praise until the walls came down. You are the one, Father that helped Esther to get wisdom in how to overtake Haman. Oh God, you are the one, Father, that dried up the blood of the woman that was bleeding for many years. You are a miracle worker. You are the one, Father, that caused water to come forth. You are the one that caused the blood of Jesus to set us free and to cleanse us from our sins. Miracle happens when you speak. You created the world with your voice, Lord. You spoke and it was and you still speak and it is and so god i thank you for speaking deliverance over your people i thank you for speaking healing over your people yes indeed god your word says our lord greater is he that is in us and he that is in the world and so i pray that that you rise up the conqueror in the in, in your people right now that everything that has come to snare them and take their minds off of your power is demolished now in the name of Jesus. We uproot you. And you have no dominion here. These are sons and daughters of God. And their freedom is in the hand and in the hands of the Lord. They are vessels. I hear the Lord say, you are vessels of his and you are not far from him he says that his love for you will never cease nothing can separate his love for, from you nothing can separate the love of god from you and so i thank you for your embrace today god god is embracing you all today thank you for your embrace today oh thank you for your embrace today father over your people you are not wretched you are not gone too far you are not hopeless you are not without treasure you are a gift and you are a treasure to the lord even in the bondage that you find yourself there is ah so god is saying there is earth in vessel you are a vessel oh yes there is the vessel that he's coming after he's coming he's coming after the vessel that he's placed inside of you even before you were formed in your mother's womb jeremiah oh yes he Rabataya. Even before you were formed in your mother's womb, Samson, God is coming for the vessel. The vessel that he placed in you even before. Oh yes, thank you, Lord. Even before even before you were formed in your in your in your mother's womb, Esther, even before you were formed in your mother's womb, Hagar, even before you were formed in your mother's womb, Jeremiah, even before you were formed in your mother's womb, Isaiah. The Lord is calling you even before you were formed in your mother's womb. He placed that vessel in you, Joshua. He placed the vessel in you and there is prosperity in you. There is purpose in you that he is after. You are purposeful. You are not a mistake. God is saying to you, you're not a mistake. 
the things that happen to you. He's going to, ah, thank you, Lord. The Lord is showing me Romans 8, 28. He said, watch and see that I will not make this thin. Bring out the goodness that I've called it to come out of you. Watch and see that everything that happened, that I'll make it, to, I'll make it work together for your good. For your good, for your good. Ha. Oh, yes, God, I thank you for the laughter that is coming in the mouth of your people. I thank you for the laughter that is coming with deliverance, God. I thank you for the laughter. I thank you. God is showing me right now when he led um, angels to visit Abram and Sarah. And God is saying that, paso rebataya. Thank you, Lord. That he's going to lead angels to visit you guys. Yes, if you, you, you might think, oh, how will angels come before me? How will angels come in my presence? That you are, you, you, Some of you are saying, how will angels come in my presence when, when I'm, I do this and I, I, I'm this and I do this and, I, I, and this and that? God says that he's going to send his angels in your presence that they will come and bring deliverance they will come and bring healing into your lives they will even come and bring restoration into your life yes they will come with the word to minister to you they will come with a prophetic anointing that will come around you that you will know what it is that god is taking you through and into the next god says that he'll be kuri iskataya that just just as he called angels to go and meet sarah sarai and abram that your name is going to change yes indeed from abram to abraham yes your name is going to change from sarai to sarah Oh, there is a name change that will happen when you encounter the Lord in worship and prayer in his word consistently. He will change your name. Yes, he will. You will not be homosexual anymore. You will be free. You will be a son. You will not be a, 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 a sneered one, but you will be free. You will desire men as a woman. You will desire women as a man. Oh, yes, you will. The name is changing. God is going to change your name, but he wants you to lean on his own. He wants you to not lean on your own understanding, but lean on his understanding. And his understanding is found in his word. His understanding is found in his word. So God, I thank you for the understanding that you're bringing into your people, your words of the Lord with wisdom you created the the world and with knowledge father you 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 made it so i thank you i thank you i thank you for wisdom and knowledge you 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 made the world with wisdom and knowledge you created and you formed it with wisdom and knowledge and so god i pray that lord you will open the eyes of these people these ones that will be able to hear your word as they read it iskataya give them revelation give them rhema God, oh yes, the rhema that said about Kuri is Karama, the rhema that Shekuri is Kata, Rebe, Sete, Bakuri Itana, the rhema that shakes the things out of them, the rhema that burns the thing out of them. That has been there for many years. Oh God, arise in them the prophets that you've called them to be. Arise in them the apostles that you call them to be. Oh yes, arise in them the he masokorebata, the David anointing that you call them to be. Arise in them habasokorebata, the the summer's anointing upon their life. Oh yes, thank you, Lord. Arise in them the poetic anointing upon them uh, upon their lives. God, arise in them the angel engineering grace upon their lives oh rabe sukuriata arise in them the abasokorema the apostolic pastoric anointing upon their lives right now the evangelical anointing upon their lives arise it in them you don't know who you are hey. the lord says you don't know who you are because you've been blinded by the spirit but god says he's going to change it he's going to change your name and he's going to show you who you are. Ah, Zereba Soto. I feel the, let the wind of the Lord come upon you. Let the fire of the Lord come upon you. Riketerema, in the name of Jesus. Zereba Sukuriata. I feel a shaking. I feel a shaking. God is going to shake you so much that the things that were falsely placed upon you will leave. Rebekuri Iskoto Rakataya. Like an earthquake, like an earthquake, there will be a shaking upon you. 
Zerebasata, that the shaking will propel you into your next. But the Lord is telling me to tell you to stay in His presence. It is the yoke that breaks. The yoke is going to break, but it's the anointing that breaks the yoke. It is the anointing that breaks the yoke. And the anointing is... Thank you, Lord. The anointing is found in the olive. It's found in the crushing. And this thing that you're going through, well, it, it crushed you. It did a lot of things to you. But God is saying that he's going to use the crushing to bring anointing out of you. And that anointing is going to heal you and heal other people. And so I pray even on the Lord, those that have ears to hear, let them hear. Those that have eyes to see, let, let them see. In the name of Jesus, what you are saying to your people at this time. Let there be that shaking that I'm feeling, God. Let there be that shaking. Habasoko rabata zerebekur iskoto rabataya mire mekuri rebekate de masse ne kanabata zerebekur katabato ramasete makere ato iskata. Oh, let there be that shaking that you want to bring into their lives. Embrace the shaking of the Lord. For when He shakes you, He moves you. When He shakes you things leave that are not supposed to be there when he shakes you there is anointing that comes upon you let there be that shaking god oh the shaking is opening the prison gates i thank you god for the shaking that you're going to bring upon your people as they step into the next with you in this deliverance section, God, that they will hear you, Father, not me, but let them hear you, God, in all your fullness, Lord. Let them acquire what it is that you're saying in your word, in all your fullness. Let your minds acquire you. I come against, in the name of Jesus, every mind-blocking spirit, in the name of Jesus, Everything that's around them that is trying to block them from being able to hear you, I cancel it with the blood of Jesus. And I ask you, Lord, that you will send angels to the atmosphere, to their presence, to remove every hindrances, every snares. Everything that is around them that is causing them not to be able to hear your word and hear these instructions. I pray the Lord, let this word fall on good soil, that it will sprout good fruit and good tree. Thank you, Lord. Yes, indeed. I yield myself to you, Adonai. My mouth, my eye gates, my ear gates, everything within me, God, is unto you. That you will speak through me as you wish, Lord, as you want, Father. That your people will be delivered, God. There will be deliverance that will come. There will be deliverance in the name of Jesus. There will be deliverance. I thank you, God, for setting the captives free. I pray the Lord, you send your angels to the east, west, south, north to release what your people are in need of. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. We walk in I hope that you were blessed by the song. This song was called, it's by Todd DeWinley, and um, it's called Stand Forever. And right after I prayed, I felt in my spirit this song. And this is to remind you to stand forever, regardless of your circumstances, regardless of what's going on in your life personally. You have to choose to stand forever, that you're not going to get tired. You know, Paul talked about how we are to run the race that has been set before us, right? Because you want to hear the Lord said, well done, good and faithful servant. You have to keep on running this race. Remove everything that easily entangles you. Hebrews talks about that. Um, the race that is set before us, there is, you know, just as Jesus had some sufferings, and he had his cup of baptism, his cup of suffering. 
you know, his cup of victory, we also have to bear our cross and bear the cups that come with our cross. There are some cups that come with the cross, right? Every time you take communion, remember that, you know, there is cups of suffering. There's a cup of, you know, um, victory. There's a cup of um, selflessness, sacrifice, right? Jesus The cup that we drink, it symbolizes a lot of cups that he had to drink. Remember when the the two, well, the mother came um, to Jesus and said, you know, can you, can you take my, my kids with you? And he's, and Jesus told, told the mother, you, you know, your, can your sons bear the cup? Can they drink from the cup that I'm, you know, I have to take? It, it didn't mean that he literally had to drink a cup, but it means that the suffering that he was going to go through, can he go through that suffering? And many of you, the things that you're going through, God is going to use it. You know, the suffering, you know, uh, God never wants to see his children bound to any spirit or any demon. That's not God. God wants to see his children walking in freedom. That's why he wants you to always see him in all your ways so that he would direct your path. Because he knows that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And he knows that the enemy comes with a, during an opportune time. Remember when the, when the devil left Jesus, what did they say? It said that he, you know, he, he left, but he, he's going to come back during, during an opportune time, right? Just because he left doesn't mean that he's not coming back. He always roams to and fro looking for somebody to devour and God doesn't want you to be the one that he he he's looking to devour he wants you to be the one that can resist the devil you know turn to God resist the devil and he will flee right uh it doesn't the, the Bible says that you know the 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 storms you know the troubles the 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 things will form it will form but it will not prosper it will form against you, but it will not prosper. A thousand will fall on, on your left hand side and 10,000 on your right hand side. But only with your eyes will you see the reward of the wicked. The trials, the tribulations will form, but it will not prosper. And many times, because we step out of the presence and the, 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 the covering, you know, of God, the, the, the Jehovah Nisi, who is our banner, the banner of God. When you step out of his banner, you are a bait for the enemy. And that's why he says that you have to ask him and he will order your steps. Man plans his way, ways, but the Lord directs his steps. When, when the devil came to Job and tried to do anything against him, he couldn't. Why? Because God has placed a hedge over him. And so when he came to the Lord and, you know, the Lord said, have you tried, have you seen, you know, tried my, my servant Job? Um, and I'm paraphrasing, um, that the, the devil said, you've placed a hedge over him. I can't, you know, he can't touch him. Right. And so God, whenever you are in the will of God, in the presence of God, he has a hedge over you that the enemy cannot even find you one or even come near you and do anything against you. The enemy might try to form the, 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 the battles and the things against you, but it will not prosper. It will not prosper. And so sometimes when you get out of his presence, when you disobey and become a Jonah, you you are swallowed up. But God listens to Jonah's prayers, right? Jonah seeked him even in the belly of the, the fish. He created an atmosphere in the belly of the fish. He he sought the Lord in a place that was uncomfortable. He sought the Lord in a place that swallowed him. You can create an atmosphere in your presence for the Lord. You can, wherever you are in your bondage, you can create an atmosphere for God to hear you and as an atmosphere of prayer, an atmosphere of worship, an atmosphere of the word for him to hear you and rescue you. Jonah prayed to the Lord and God doesn't just see you, but he sees your prayer. He sees in the spirit. And so he saw Jonah's heart. He saw Jonah's repentance. He saw Jonah's plea for for deliverance from the, the, the place that his disobedience led him. And, got, and, and the Lord led him out. The very thing that swallowed him vomited him out. So what God is saying is that the very thing that swallowed you, the spirit of perversion... 
homosexuality will have to vomit you out when you seek him, when you become humble before him and pray for deliverance. And so I'm gonna, today I'm going to walk you through what God shared with me exactly what he shared with me and before i would after the song and well during the song that you guys heard the lord was telling me that he's going to restore your femininity again for women that are going through that are going through deliverance from perversion he's going to restore your femininity again and men who have lost your masculinity god said he's going to restore your masculinity again but the key is to seek him in this. You cannot be free without his presence, without him. Jonah created a presence in the belly of a fish. Therefore, you can create a presence anywhere that you are, wherever you are. So remember last time I spoke to you guys, I said, um, during this deliverance, you want to have two things in your mind. One. You want to tell yourself, well, after the fact that you have um, voiced and agreed that you want deliverance, because that which is uh, revealed is ready to be delivered, right? Is ready to be healed and delivered. Um, I, I told you guys 